हेलो वेलकम टू अनदर वीडियो ऑफ कोड स्निपेट तो दिस इज बेसिकली द कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ लास्ट वीडियो वेयर वी आर लुकिंग इन टू स्प्रिंग बूट शेड्यूलिंग तो इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव अंडरस्टूड एवरीथिंग अबाउट स्प्रिंग बूट शेड्यूलिंग वी हैव सीन हाउ टू मेक यूज ऑफ एट द रेट इनेबल शेड्यूलिंग अनोटेशन एंड वी हैव ऑल्सो सीन हाउ वी कैन मेक यूज ऑफ शेड्यूल्ड अनोटेशन इन साइड स्प्रिंग बूट अपार्ट फ्रॉम दैट वी हैव सीन मेनी थिंग्स सच एज फिक्स डिले फिक्स रेट एंड क्रॉन एक्सप्रेशन एज वेल Now in this video we are going to look into very very important topic that is dynamic scheduling. Now what is the use of dynamic scheduling? Well that is something which we are going to look into this video. So this is going to be a fun video so sit back relax and enjoy the show. Right so let's quickly jump into the agenda of this particular video. So basically Spring Boot dynamic scheduling right. So first let's have a quick recap on what we have seen in the last video. So we have seen what is scheduling and why we need scheduling after that we have seen how we can enable scheduling inside spring boot after that we have seen basic scheduling we have seen fixed rate fixed delay and initial delay after that we have seen cron expressions as well now in this video we are going to look into dynamic scheduling right so basically spring boot dynamic scheduling now we will first go through what and why we need dynamic scheduling and how we can manage to do dynamic scheduling by using thread pool task scheduler so we will understand what exactly is this guy and after that we will see the actual implementation right so that is basically the agenda so let's get started with why so let's go to canvas over here so let's say this is basically your application right we are looking into ecom application right so we have implemented this particular order processing service in the last video right we have implemented this order scheduler right so this is basically process pending orders and here we are making use of at the rate schedule annotation here we are making use of fixed delay and this particular process pending order functions will be scheduled accordingly right so that is basically something which we have already seen in the last video so if you haven't seen that yet i will recommend you to go ahead and check that out as a prerequisite of this particular video so this is something which we have already seen right now let's say that application we deploy inside production right so let's say this is your production environment this is your prod environment and your application is running fine right and you are getting many orders in your application and according to this particular frequency you are processing this particular order so this is basically your scheduler right process order scheduler this particular process pending orders scheduler that we have inside our application right let's say every 5 minute your orders are being processed so there is a chunk of orders and this guy is processing your orders right but let's say on certain days let's say there is a sale so let's say there is a festival coming up what festival is next holy probably so let's say so let's say holy festival is coming up and we have lot of offers inside our ecom application on holy festival right now in that sale your prices will be reduced and you will see a increase in orders so a lot of orders will be increased over here right in that time right so we were expecting few orders in 5 minutes but now we are getting hell lot of orders and we want to reduce this processing time right now i want to bring it to let's say 1 minute i don't want to wait for 5 minutes rather i want to process orders every 1 minute what do you think we need to do in this scenario we have scheduled this fixed delay to 5 minutes now i want to reschedule that and make it to 1 minute but our application is already deployed over here how i am going to change it how can i change the value which are given inside at the rate scheduled annotation what i need to do i need to change this to 5 minutes and i will need to redeploy my application inside production again but it's not a feasible approach i cannot just change something small and deploy this to production right it's not feasible in real time applications right how we can achieve this scenario now we cannot change this particular timing inside production inside this scheduled annotation right so what we want we want a dynamic mechanism so that we can achieve this particular goal change the value of this particular scheduler dynamically right so that is basically our goal that is when dynamic scheduling comes into picture what if what if we do this let's say we have db right so we will have db so what we can do we can store the scheduler or the cron expressions that we want inside this particular database right and this particular application gets that data from this particular database right so now we are detaching that cron expression saving inside database right and whenever i want to change this particular cron expression i will just have a api over here and update the value inside database and force my scheduler to use that particular new value now right so this scenario is basically our dynamic scheduling we can detach that particular cron expression 
from your application and put it inside your database right be it cron expression be it your fixed delays or whatever values you want to configure you can put it inside your database and force your scheduler to restart and get the data the updated data basically from your database and use that right so in that case this particular problem of sale will be resolved right as and when my orders are increasing i will just decrease this time or orders are decreasing i will just increase this time again right so in that case i don't really need to redeploy my application right so that will basically solve a big problem for us so that's why dynamic schedule is very very important in this scenario right so that is basically dynamic scheduling and that is why we need dynamic scheduling to update the cron expressions dynamically right right so let's proceed and let's see what is thread pool task scheduler and let's see how we can implement dynamic scheduling inside spring boot right so let's go to the code that we have so if you remember in the last video we have seen this particular process pending orders function right so this particular function will be processed every 5 minutes or whatever time you provide over here right if i change this specific value then your time will be updated right so that is basically your scheduled annotation right but what we are going to do now we are going to make this configurable or rather we are not going to make use of at the rate scheduled rather we are going to call this particular function dynamically by using our thread pool task scheduler right so what is thread pool task scheduler thread pool task scheduler is basically a class provided by spring and managed by spring which will help us to dynamically update the value of your cron expressions or dynamically set the values for your schedulers right so this is basically multi threaded task scheduler right by using this you can run multiple task in parallel as well right for example here if you have scheduled annotation then it runs in single thread but by using thread pool task scheduler you can run multiple task in parallel as well but in this case we are going to use this guy to update the values the cron expressions dynamically right so here i have added basic code already right so here if you see i have added this schedule config over here so it's a basically a entity so schedule config so here what we have we have this particular id we have task name right the task for which we want to have a expression so we have a cron expression so this is basically the table that will be created inside our database right so we are storing the cron expression for respective task inside database and we have created a dto so i have created a dto over here which will accept this task name and cron expression from user right so it's basically a simple pojo that we have after that i have added this particular controller scheduler controller so scheduler update cron right so we will update the specific cron over here and what this guy will do this guy will just call this particular function update cron expression right and it will pass the task name and the cron expression that we are getting from cron update request so this cron update request is basically the the dto that we just saw right and over here if we come back then we will just call this update cron expression method right now if you see this particular class so this is basically dynamic scheduler service that we have created over here right and here we have auto wide a repository so if you see over here we have scheduled config repository and here we are extending jpa repository and adding scheduled config over here so this is basically the same entity that we saw right after that i have injected order scheduler so that we can call this particular method so end goal is to schedule this particular task right but we are not making use of at the rate scheduled now so this guy dynamic scheduler service will take care of that now after that we are making use of thread pool task scheduler over here right we are just creating a new instance of that after that we are making use of scheduled future right think of a scheduled future as a receipt of your order right so you are ordering something in mcdonalds let's say they will give you a receipt and uh, you will wait for that much amount of time and after that you will get your order right so scheduled future represent a scheduled task right that is scheduled in future and will be executed or will be cancelled right either way we will see how we are making use of it right now what we are doing over here in the constructor when this particular class is initialized we are just initializing this task scheduler that we have created now this initialize function will just set up executor service for us right so this method basically set up a thread pool for us as our thread pool task scheduler is multi threaded right so it will just configure thread pool for us and it will make our scheduler ready to accept the request right so that is basically the simple task that this guy will do right 
Now, after that, let's come back to this particular update cron expression method, right? So this we have called inside update cron method inside our controller, right? So from here, we will just update the cron expression, right? So here, what we will do, we'll just find the task. So let's say what task we are doing now, we are doing this process pending orders, right? Where it is, it is inside our order scheduler. So this is basically the task, let's say. And what we will do, we'll just try to find the scheduled config by using this task name. If we find it, we will just update the value or if we are not finding it, that means this is basically a new task that we want to schedule and we will just create a new or else create a new scheduled config, right? So what we will do is config.set task name. We will just set this task name and we will just set the cron expression and save it back inside the database. So this particular chunk of code is only to save this particular details inside our database, right? Nothing else. After that, once we receive this particular config, which is updated inside your database, we will restart scheduled task, right? This is basically the function. Now, this particular scheduled task is the scheduled task I was talking about, right? So what is this scheduled task? It is a scheduled future, right? What we will do over here, we'll just have a simple null check. And after that, what we will do, we will call a schedule method on task scheduler, right? So task scheduler have schedule method inside it which will take that particular task and take that particular trigger and it will. So what task we want to schedule? We want to schedule this particular method, right? This particular method we want to schedule process pending orders, right? And here what we will do, we'll just pass the cron expressions, the new cron expressions that, that we have saved inside our database, right? So that is basically the cron expression that we will pass over here. So new cron expression. So it's basically a cron trigger. Cron trigger will just return the object of trigger. So if you see over here, cron trigger, cron trigger is basically implementing a trigger, right? And this is basically the trigger used for cron expressions, right? So that is basically something we will pass over here. And once you do that, this particular task will be scheduled by using this cron expression as simple as that. Now that is basically the simple code over here, right? Now what we will do, let's try to run this code, right? Let's see what happens. So let it come up. Right. So initially there should be nothing inside our database. So that is why our scheduler will not start anything. Right. So what we will do, just let me just go here and let me bring up my postman over here. Right. Now this is basically the API that we have added. And let's me just add a simple cron expression. Right. Simple cron expression to run this particular task every second. Right. So this particular cron expression will run this particular task every second. Before that, let's go back over here. And if you see nothing is being printed, that means our scheduler is not working. Nothing is being printed on the console, right? What will I do? I will just go back over here and hit this particular API, which should update the data inside our DB and trigger our scheduler. So if you see over here, now the order started processing. If you see over here, we are getting logs each second, right? So our scheduler is basically started working. Now let's say I want to change the time, right? Let's say I want to change this cron expression. Let's say I want to execute a task every five seconds now, right? So what I will do, I will just update this particular cron expression over here, right? I'll just update this cron expression. And what I will do, I will just hit this again, right? Now this cron expression should process our order every five seconds. So let me just add some this is over here and let's see what is happening. So this is one. Now let's wait for five seconds and let's see if other one is coming, right? So other one got triggered every five seconds. So this is basically coming every five seconds, right? So that is how you can make use of this API and schedule your task accordingly, right? Schedule your task accordingly, depending on the orders you are getting, right? So that is basically how you can make use of dynamic scheduler by making use of your thread pool task scheduler right now let's come back over here and let's discuss about this scheduled task now here we are doing nothing to this scheduled task we are just updating the value right but if you see this check over here now then this scheduled task if it is not equal to null then what we want to do we want to cancel that particular task right so as i have already mentioned this scheduled task is the receipt of your task that you are scheduling right now what we have sent, we have sent five seconds, right? Now the scheduled task have that particular receipt that, okay, this particular task is running every five seconds. Now, next time when I'm updating the value, the existing scheduler, which is now running, which is for five seconds should be canceled, right? If that is not canceled, then you will have two schedulers running one running for one second and new running for five seconds, right? So that is basically the problem over here. 
Now that is why scheduled task comes into picture and if it is not null then what we are doing we are just cancelling it right we can just cancel it okay stop the current one and then schedule the next one and put that new one inside your scheduled task what I can do let me just stop and rerun this application in debug mode right so that we have some kind of clear picture what exactly is happening right now I have added debug point over here now this is the first time we are adding an expression let's add for one second right so now I will send now it should stop over here now your scheduled task is basically null right your scheduled task is null because there is no processing going on we haven't scheduled anything yet right makes sense now it won't go inside and now it will just start your scheduler so if I proceed now your scheduled task will have something let's see what it have now here you will see the details about your trigger your executor and all the details that this guy is storing over here right now this is started basically this is started and let's see what happens when we send it next time now if you go over here then your execution should have been started already where is my terminal let's go over here and the terminal should be here so this guy is processing your orders right every second now let me update that to make it every five seconds right now I will send it again now if you see over here now this guy is not null because the last scheduled task that we have created is present inside this particular scheduler right if you see this same the same trigger we have over here now since we have that trigger what we will do we'll just cancel it right once it is cancelled this particular scheduled trigger the existing one will be cancelled will be marked as cancelled and now when we schedule the another task scheduler that is the new one with new cron expression then this guy will be updated with the trigger so if you see this trigger over here is basically updated right and now this new schedule task contains our new schedule right so that is why we have made use of this particular schedule task and that is basically the significance of your schedule task so if I go over here in the console now this guy will start scheduling every five seconds right so, so as you can see it is started scheduling every five seconds right so that is basically how you can make use of scheduled task right scheduled task means scheduled future and that is how you can make use of thread pool executor this thread pool task scheduler will help you to schedule your task right so that is how we are making use of this thread pool task scheduler you can run multiple tasks in parallel as well so there is a lot more potential than just scheduling the task inside this thread pool task scheduler right for our use case we are making use of that so that is basically your dynamic scheduling by using this thread pool task executor and scheduled future right that's basically it about the dynamic scheduling so if you go back over here so we have seen what and why dynamic scheduling we have seen thread pool task scheduler we have seen the implementation as well, right so that is basically the use case of your dynamic scheduling and that is how you can implement it that's basically it i hope you have clear understanding of why we need dynamic scheduling and how we can implement that inside spring boot application right so if you like the video hit the like button don't forget to subscribe to code snippet share this video with your friends so that they are also aware of dynamic scheduling inside spring boot that's it for this video see you in the next video <laughs>